Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi of TSG Multimedia. Welcome to Model Railroading 101. As uh, usual, I'm in front of the camera, and John Abatacola is behind the camera making everything look good. School's in session. Yeah. So uh, today we're going to talk about um, a topic which has been suggested and also that we thought of doing anyway, which is uh, DC and DCC. Uh, basically, what are those things? You hear those terms a lot if you're looking at like a catalog of model train stuff or a website that sells model train stuff. Uh, what does it mean? I so, know one thing, Dan. Yeah? The prices next to the one that says DC are always lower. <laughs> Usually, yeah. Right? <laughs> right. Well, they both have to do with controlling trains, running model trains, okay? But the way they go about it is is different. And DC is simply direct current. And that's the kind of old school way of doing things. That's the second half of ACDC, the band. Right. And uh, actually, AC has been used as, as a way to control trains, too, notably with Lionel and Marklin. But we're not talking about that. I'm talking about like HO scale trains and N scale trains um, traditionally have been DC powered, which basically means you have uh, voltage on the rails and... When there's more voltage, the trains go faster, and when there's less voltage, they slow down, and if you turn it off, they stop. And it's pretty simple. Uh, DCC stands for Digital Command Control, and that's a little more sophisticated, and it lets you do a lot of things you can't do with DC. Um, so we'll just talk about some of the differences and how it all works. So before we talk about the control systems, I thought... I'd pull a model diesel apart so you can get an idea of what's in these things. And I picked a simple one because it's a little easier to see what's going on. There's a motor in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's an electric motor. And then it has a drive shaft that goes out on each side of the motor that connects to the uh, gear towers from the trucks. And that's how the mechanical energy gets from the motor to the wheels. Okay, so it turns a, a thing that has right. a gear on it. There's a, it turns a shaft like this, and then that gets switched to turning gears like, you know, this way, and that yeah. is connected to the wheels. And then um, each side of the locomotive, each set of wheels, I should say, on each side of the locomotive is wired to one of the poles on the motor. So uh, the left side would be wired to one pole, and the right side would be wired to the other. So basically in, in the rails, you've got, you know, half of the circuits on one rail and half the circuits on the other rail. So the power comes from the trucks and goes to the motor and that's how it gets its electricity. Okay. Different models may look a little different, but most model diesels are basically built along these same lines with the motor in the center and the drive shafts and the drive shafts and then the, the wires. Some of them have some more circuitry in there for lights and different things, but essentially they're all pretty similar. Here I have a couple of different DC throttles, and they look a little different, but essentially they are pretty similar in how they work. There's an on-off switch, and there's a direction switch. This one, the direction switch is over here. And then there's a, a knob that controls the train speed. Right. So actually, really what we're looking at, though, is the direction switch is a polarity right. switcher, and the throttle is just a current regulator. Right. right. So what this is, it's 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 taking current from your house. You know, you just plug it into an AC outlet just like anything else. And it's basically turning that into 12 volts DC or thereabouts. Usually, sometimes they're 14, but, uh, you know, usually something around 12 volts is the maximum they'll put out. And then, it, um, you know, it'll start at zero. And then the more you advance the knob the closer you get to that full 12 volts and then, you know, then you put it back down again. On the back, there's, on this one, here's where the power cord comes in from the wall. And then there's a set of connections that, the ones with the wires on them, that goes to the track. I have, I leave wires on this because I use it a lot. Right. And then the other set of screws that doesn't have anything attached to it, um, which on this one I think is these things here, is uh, an AC out, and that's if you have accessories you want to run off of it also. But you can kind of ignore that for now. Yeah, what we're, we're really interested in is just the track power. Yeah, we're just talking about, in both cases here, we're talking about the, the connections that are on the left. Right. And this one, I think, has a, a wall wart that plugs into it, so it doesn't have its own power cord. Right. But it's got a little 
wall wart input. But in any, any case, they're pretty similar. They both have a knob. You know, they both just both. basically put more or less voltage on the track. And, and reverse polarity. And reverse polarity to make the engine go a different direction. So just to have a little demonstration, I have a locomotive on the track, and I'll advance the throttle, and it moves. Then I can hit the direction switch, and it goes the other way. So it's pretty simple. This is how DC control works. Yeah, the, the lower the, the voltage, right, the slower right. the... If I turn it up higher, yeah, don't, you know, it goes don't turn faster. It too high. It might fall I know off. I've only got like two feet of track here, so I can't go too fast. But um, <laughs> now, one thing I wanted to show is, oh, if you put a another locomotive this on is the also, track, this is also DC. Yes, um, they're basically going to do the oh. same thing, and as you can see, they're not quite running at the same speed, but they both want to go the same direction at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that that one nine nine twenty one there on the right is, is a little very, it's very eager. Yeah, it's a little faster than the other one. Yeah, another thing that's characteristic of DC power is that the lights will get brighter as the engine goes faster. Sometimes they have circuits in them to fiddle with that, but most engines just work like this. So if I start off at low speed, the lights fairly dim. Oh yeah, you ramp it up there, and it's a lot yeah. brighter. So the more power I give it, this is pretty much full throttle right now. And now the lights are on brighter. Yeah, I can definitely see it dimming down as you as you pull back on the power. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for DC, um, to cover the basics anyway. Yeah, pretty pretty straightforward stuff, right? It I mean, is pretty more, straightforward. You... More current means more speed or, or more brightness in the light. Right. So and less means slower or... So what about DCC? Well, as I said before, it's digital command control. And there's a lot of differences, but one of the main differences is that with DCC, it's an AC type current, and you have a constant voltage on the rails. Hmm. So the control system is not changing the track voltage. The key to DCC is that every engine has a little circuit in it called a decoder. It's like a little computer, right? Yeah, and that decoder lives between the motor and the track power. What it does is it acts like a little gatekeeper. And the DCC system sends signals to the decoder, and then the decoder does something based on those signals. So the signals come through the rails? Yes. There's okay. A, I, don't ask me how this works. It's electronic wizardry. Um, if you're an electrical engineer and really want to know, I'm sure you can look it up. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know how my TV works either, but I know how to use the remote and watch what I want to watch. Um, so it's kind of the same thing. Um, there's some kind of a carrier signal that's superimposed on the track voltage. And each locomotive has an address, which is usually the number of the locomotive. Okay. And you punch that address into your DCC system, and then you can control that engine. So into your controller, right? Into your controller, right. So is it somehow... Well, I guess maybe I don't understand this. So, so it has power that runs all the time, and somehow it sends signals through that power. Right. But so, where do those signals come from? The controller? The signals come from the DCC system, either from the... On a simple DCC system, the controller may be this whole system. Okay. Um, other ones, bigger ones are modular, and they have different components. But regardless of that, the signal comes from the DCC system, based on what you're doing with your controller. Okay. So the controller is typically kind of like a DC throttle. It has a knob that makes the engine go faster and slower. It's got a direction thing and some other keys on it. So you're, you're, you're doing more or less the same thing. It's just done in a different way. And the decoder sits there listening to this control signal, and every time it gets an instruction that's addressed to it, then it says, oh, I need to do something. So it's kind of like, you know how email works, where you can send an email to someone and there's like how many billion people on the internet, but it only goes to the person you, you send it to? It's kind of the, kind of like that. So it's so, addressed. It's addressed, right. And so the address is a number, and typically people set that to the number on the side of the engine, since that's easy to remember. Mm -hmm. So why don't we take a look and see how this works? This is a typical DCC starter system. Mine happens to be Digitrax. There are other brands available. This was just what I had. 
Okay. But they're all basically do the same things. Uh, it looks just, like a calculator. Yeah, well, it's got a little more stuff on it, but it's it's basically like a DC throttle. It has a little power supply, and it has the main control unit, and then it's got wires that go to the track, and this is just the cord coming in from the power supply. So on look, this look, one... Looks like a, a rotary throttle there, kind of like the other yeah, one you were looking so at. So it's got your throttle knob, same deal, okay? And this one happens to have a, a direction switch that has forward, brake, and reverse. Brake just means off, basically. <laughs> um they had to give it a real name, though. If you put it on brake, it'll make the engine stop, yeah. is all that means. And then it's got some other buttons, and we'll, we'll worry about those later. Now, one of the advantages of DCC is that most of the throttles and, and components are modular, so you can add pieces as your layout grows. This would be fine for a small layout, but if you have a bigger layout and with a lot of locomotives, you might want to have something a little bigger than that. So let's take a look at one of those. So this is actually my system from home. Okay. And it's also Digitrax because that's just what I have. But this is a throttle. And in this case, the throttle is a separate component. And it plugs into this other thing, which is called a command station or a booster. Okay. And then there's this power supply, which is a bigger power supply. Oh, so is the booster a signal booster? Is that it? Yeah, this is kind of the brains of the thing. Okay. Oh. This is where all the logic or whatever is happening mm -hmm. so and this this will send basically this the throttle plugs into the, to this thing right and so and then this thing in turn sends commands out to the track through these wires like this right okay so it's kind of the the nerve center of the whole operation this is a decoder and as i said this is kind of the key to the whole dcc operation okay one of these will go in every locomotive. Right. Okay. And they usually have some kind of a connector. This is an 8-pin connector, which is kind of common. And a lot of locomotives nowadays will come with a socket for this. Is that what they call DCC ready? Right. Oh, I've seen those too in, right. the, in the catalogs. So this little circuit, and these come in different sizes and shapes, but this, this is just a typical one uh, for HO scale. And... I know it's got a lot of wires, but because these DCC uh, decoders also handle lighting and some other things, um, and sometimes sound. But so that's why they have so many wires. Oh, so each of those wires would go out to something like a light, potentially, or, yeah, or a speaker potentially. or something. Yeah. But basically, there's just four wires that you need to run the engine, and that's uh, two wires from the track and two wires to the motor. Oh, right, because you said this goes in between the track and the motor. Right. So this yeah. is like a little tiny remote controlled. DC power pack that lives inside your engine. So it takes that AC power from the rails, converts it to DC, and then varies the voltage to make the engine go faster and slower, and also flips the polarity if you hit the reverse button. Oh, so, so it's doing all that stuff based on the controls that it's receiving from your controller. Right. Or the signals, I guess, from the right. controller. Okay, got right. it. That's exactly right. Okay, so this is the mechanism from a different engine. This one is uh, DCC ready. Oh, I know what you're doing. You're yeah. going to turn that into a DCC uh, locomotive? Right. And usually what you do is just, um, they usually have a little dummy plug like this, and you just pull that out. They made it just for me. <laughs> and then we'll take our decoder, and you just pop it in. So it's just that simple? You just plug it into that thing, and it, it can and now be. it works? Yeah. And that would actually, this engine should actually run on DCC now if I was to, to run it. And I'd have to tape this down or something because it's kind of flopping all over the place here. But um, that's basically what's inside any DCC engine is one of these. And it's just, you know, like I said, acting as a little mini throttle that lives inside the engine. And takes orders from the one that you hold in your hand. Right. It takes orders from your DCC system. Now that we've kind of seen some of what's inside these things... I have a engine that I've already installed DCC into. Right. And um, I've got my controller. Mm-hmm. So, and I, if you can read this here, this says 5111. That is also what it says here. I don't know if the camera can see that, but that's the number. Right. So I have this set up to work with this engine. Now, you, you don't have to use the same number that's printed on the side of the engine as your address, 
But unless you really want to confuse yourself, um, <laughs> I would recommend doing that, doing it that way. Yeah, and I would confuse myself. <laughs> yeah. or, or I'd come up with some harebrained idea. Okay, all the ones with yellow are going to be number two. Well, then yeah. you can't run them at the same time, right? Right. right. <laughs> so it's just easier. <laughs> it's generally easier if you just use the number that's printed on the side of the engine. It, it just works. I have my throttle and I have it set to forward. And I'll advance it. It seems like it's not as choppy as the DC one that we ran earlier. One of the things about DCC is it gives you a little bit uh, finer control, especially with the better decoders. Yeah, look how slow it is. You can get really nice, sm slow, smooth starts and, and stops and mm -hmm. um, just generally gives you better motion of the train than DC will. So that little decoder in there regulates better than your DC power pack does, doesn't it? Right. Hmm. So that's that's one nice thing. And I'll I'll demonstrate something else here. Let's just stop that one. Okay, so I just put another engine on the track. And I want to show you something. They're both supposed to Hey. The red one's not going. Right. That's because the controller's talking to 5111. Oh, so it's actually getting power, isn't it? The red one? Oh, yeah. But huh. 6607 over here says, that's not my problem. He's talking to 5111. I don't have to do anything. He didn't get that email. Right. So it's just going to sit there. Hmm. Oh, but let me guess, though. If you type in 6607 in your controller, right. try, so try this. I want to see. Let's do that. So, loco. It's probably hard to see upside down, huh? Yeah. Okay, so. Oh, now the yellow goes. the yellow one's not getting the email. Right, because now I'm talking to 6607. I'm not talking to 5111 anymore. So, right there already, it's a little bit of, I think, of an advantage, because now you can run more right. than one train on the same track even. You can't do this with DC... You'd have to have them on separate tracks, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd have to have them on separate tracks. You'd have to cut gaps in the track, um, which is how people used to do it. And some people still do do that. And you end up having all these toggle switches and everything to switch between one DC power pack and another one so you can run more than one train. Um, but it does get kind of cumbersome. Sounds like um, a pain. Yeah. DCC is a little more elegant that way. However, uh, the trade-off is that you need to have one of those little decoders inside each engine. Yeah, that can get expensive, can't it? It can, especially if you like sound like I do. What if I wanted to run these two together? I bet you can do it. Right. Couple them up. Now, if I just couple them up, they're just gonna one's gonna drag the other one. Okay. But with the controller, you can create something called a consist. Okay. So I'm gonna do that. Is this where you're going to address the same commands to both of them? Right. What I'm doing here is I'm telling 6607 that it's now in a consist with 5111, so it's going to do whatever 5111 does. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So now, they're both running. So they're actually combining pulling power too? Or? Yep. Oh. So another cool thing you can do with DCC is have better control over lighting. Oh, so you can turn the lights on and off without making it move, huh? Right. Yeah. So yeah. there's the headlight. Notice the engine's not going anywhere, but the headlight is on really bright. Yeah, it's like it was at full blast. It is. Yeah. It's at full bright because, remember, the track power is constant no matter whether the engine's moving or staying still. Oh, so the decoder then is allowing the track power to pass through it into the light. Right. But not telling the motor to do anything. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like I said, it's a little gatekeeper. Yeah, it's selecting where the energy is going. Right, and I can also turn on the ditch lights. Oh, see, now that's different, too. Yeah. And the number boards. See, this is one of your ultra deluxe models, isn't yeah. it? And I even have the little blinky light on top. Oh, look, it's winking at me. Yeah. <laughs> and you can even have sound. Wow. And I can hear the motor and everything. Yeah. You don't get that with DC. No, not usually. 
So, <laughs> so that's some of the stuff you can do with DCC. It makes it kind of cool. Another thing you can do with DCC that's kind of cool is you can control track switches or turnouts, as they're sometimes called, uh, layout lighting, and other accessories. And they sell what they call stationary decoders for that, which are just decoders that, instead of being in a locomotive, they just live on the layout somewhere and they are wired to whatever you want to hook them to. Do people use turntables with that too? Or? You can, yeah. Huh. Some of the, some turntables uh, are DCC uh ready or DCC equipped. So really what DCC is doing is taking something that's more, I don't know, toy-like and less versatile and turning it into something that can be programmed to behave just like the real thing. Kind of, yeah. And it's a way to kind of streamline a lot of the wiring when you're doing a layout, especially if you have a big layout. Um, the wiring becomes a lot simpler mm -hmm. because if you're doing it the old school way with DC and like I said, you end up with all these control panels and toggle switches and all this stuff. And, and I, I've built layouts like that. And you know, if you have a problem and you have to try to figure out what some wire is doing, oh, troubleshooting goes, could be a real pain. Believe me, it's a pain. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm a DCC convert. I have been for a long time. Uh, and I would definitely probably recommend it, especially if you have You'd a large layout. Definitely, probably. Well, I would I would recommend it. Yeah, you would recommend it. Yeah. yeah, especially nowadays because so much stuff is either DCC ready or a lot of locomotives are even DCC equipped nowadays. Mm -hmm. Some of them even with sound. Um, but you know, some people may still like the DC, and which is best is really just depends on your preferences. Yeah, it seems to me like DC would be more like quick to operate like you yeah. could just throw something on the track and turn the knob and it goes right and if that's what you want that's yeah. that's fine you know and if especially if it's a small layout and you're only running maybe one or two engines at a time it's probably fine mm -hmm. you know um but if you're doing anything more complicated and you want to run you know uh, a Southern Pacific train over Donner Pass and you've got five tunnel motors on the front and three more in the middle and one pushing on the back. Um, yeah, good luck. Yeah, I would definitely want to be on a DCC layout to do something like that because wow. it would just be really difficult to manage that <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> especially if you want to have it meet trains coming the other way and, you know, all that kind it, it of wouldn't, thing. You couldn't do it. I mean, it would be way yeah. too hard to do that. Yeah, so... Anyway, hopefully this gives you a little bit of an overview. There's, you know, there's a lot more we could go into, but I think just to kind of hit the highlight reel was the point of this uh, yeah, that's episode. What, that's what Model Railroading 101 is all about. We're kind of just exploring the basic stuff, right? For, right? for beginners or people that maybe just have a question about it, right? Right, exactly. Well, I should mention, speaking of questions, uh, one of the things we like to do is take input from people who watch our stuff. So if you have a topic that you would like for us to cover, put it in the comments section below. We see all the comments that get posted to our YouTube channel. Yeah. So if yeah. we like your idea, we'll probably use it. One of the things sometimes people ask about DCC is what's the best system? And the truth is there really isn't a best system. They're all pretty good. Um, I, I'm most familiar with Digitrax just because that's what I've had for years. Uh, but I've used NCE, which is another brand, and that seems pretty good, too. Those are the um, two big ones, aren't they? Those are the two big ones. ESU has a system, too, called ECOS or uh, ECOS or something like hmm. that, which I've Didn't heard know good that. things about. Um, and there there are some others. Um, you know, it's really a matter of uh, what you prefer, because they, they all work a little bit differently. And also, another thing to look at is if you're going to operate with other people— and they're all using one brand, then you might want to go with that brand just because they'll be able to help you more easily than if you go with something else that they don't know about. So, you know, th those are the kinds of things to think about. But I think any of the systems that are out there right now would probably do a fairly decent job of running the layout. Okay. Well, I guess that's probably it for this episode. So I'm just waiting to know if the Class is excused yet, because i got to go to the bathroom now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we're done. So. <laughs>